So this is a really interesting case. It's a Victorian top floor flat in London. There is some brown staining. Uh, there's some colourless staining, the salts. Uh, and in fact, we find some of it's damp and some is, is dry. Let's look at the survey now. So there are a lot of damp patches around. There had been an issue with roofing there, but it was solved a few years ago. Uh, this has appeared over the last few years. And there's this area here in the corner. Uh, and then there's been a gutter issue over here. So we'll have a look at all of these. So where you're getting the brown patch mm -hmm. is because water is passing through building material. And when it's dark brown like that, it's generally because it's going through wood, wood as a component. Mm -hmm. uh, so that indicates penetrating damp or, or, or potentially even a leak from uh, above. Um, whereas, and, and obviously this is the same there, mm -hmm. and that, that will be uh, the gutter issue, which I'll have a look, better look at outside. Mm -hmm. But this one, by contrast, is on the chimney breast. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a possibility of it being hygroscopic salts, but I have a feeling from looking from the outside and, and actually also, when you look here, mm -hmm. these are calcium sulfate salts, so you get the surface salts. If you look at the last um, property that I surveyed, they had hygroscopic salts, and you'll see the difference. Mm -hmm. um, you often get them on chimney breasts. Mm. That's why I wondered. But actually looking at it, I think you've got a form of condensation. Right. Because you've got a heat, an area of heat loss this, the chimney breast is single skin of brick and you've got, even though it's capped off, you've, you're getting heat loss mm -hmm. from it. Uh, you've got a um, flat roof above. Mm -hmm. and But you're not, you're not getting the brown stain. Mm -hmm. So it's indicating it's not, the water isn't coming through. Just stepping in, in fact, if you look lower down, there are some hygroscopic salts, but I didn't spot that until later on in the survey. It's worse having conversation. And obviously you're drying clothes to some extent here and you've got the bathroom nearby. The kitchen's not far away. All those factors possibly working from home a bit more, certainly during COVID, mm -hmm. but it probably goes back longer ago yeah. than that. And you had a flatmate at one stage, mm -hmm. so. And she um, had heaters on and all sorts of. Well, it's, it's that imbalance. Mm -hmm. I can't show you I'll show you with an infrared camera just to, to show you the, the concepts. But this time of year, there's very little temperature difference between the inside and outside. Mm -hmm. But in winter, when there's more than 10 degrees difference between the inside and outside, it's you can see very clearly where you're getting condensation or risk of condensation. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also get what's called interstitial condensation, which is condensation that's forming within the the void. Right. Uh, within the building material. Mm -hmm. But I think this is just standard condensation. Okay. Uh, right, so we've we've heated the room up. It's now showing 23 degrees and outside is probably about 16, I should think. It's not, it isn't highlighting massive areas of, of heat loss. Uh, if you look there, mm -hmm. uh, by con contrast, there is much colder. So, uh, I and over... This is using a thermal imaging camera. It's useful for identifying areas of risk and can help with identifying dampness, but it can never be used for identifying the root cause of dampness. But it can indicate, for example, condensation uh, as opposed to hygroscopic salts. So... Just to explain, the, these um, heated drying racks are terrible because they superheat the damp clothes, uh, create lots of vapour, mm -hmm. uh, which then finds its way to the cold wall. So it's the fastest way of creating condensation. Yeah. Um, so that's normal for set up masonry position and that's normal. So I'm now using a damp meter, radio frequency damp meter 
to check for damp. And in fact, this section of wall was dry at the time. So the signs of potential dampness there. This looks like it's been damp at some stage. So this is in the loft immediately above. So with this sarki material, what can happen is it can sweat, i.e. condensation, underneath. And I'm not seeing any It could be vents. historic damp. Oh yeah. I'm not seeing any vents. Uh, so there is a case for opening up the sarki material. You, what you do is you do that at the top. A, a triangular vent cut so into the sarki um, material at the top would the allow the roof to breathe. The sarki material is a sort of braces in case water does start to leak through the roof. Um, it's, it's a little bit damp there, but it's, oh, it's damp there. It's obviously dry at the moment. So some of the bricks in the loft the were, in fact, damp. Work has solved the problem. I put this onto. I mean, to some degree, you expect some dampness in See the bricks in the loft because the penetrating damp from the party wall, even though there's come some That's coping so stones, there's, there's, there's still some but gaps. It does look like dampness went in there at some stage, but clearly has been there. Got this corner. You'll see the gaps later on. Have a look on the outside. What I'm going to do. Yeah, so that is damp. That's an ongoing damp area. I recommend it's getting one of these. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll put it on the report. But And then you want to um, find something like a percent, mm -hmm. like a so hundred percent to mark the corner, a spot, clearly. or mark lines where. Um, you know, like sort of uh, contours where mm -hmm. certain percentages show up. It, and just what you're trying to see is you probably do it once a month, mm -hmm. just see whether it's drying out following the recommendations. Right, okay, so yeah. um, that's so what I do. Mark it on the wall, then. Uh, or you can, you can just, or you, well, you can physically, I mean, given that you're going to be painting that wall anyway, nice. you can physically mark it. Um, but if not, you can, well, you can pencil it or just, just take photos and. Yeah. You can you can sort of literally photo photo mm -hmm. it in lots of different ways of doing it. So this is the roof from the outside. It's a um, it's a cement based roof. Uh, so this is so th this flashing is new. This render is new. We have got a risk here. Water coming down, potentially clay pouring down here, rolling into the brick, into the party wall. Uh, also, we need to be aware of the other side of the party wall. And um, I mean, that's not too bad, but the very fact that, that moss is growing here shows that um, it would have been wet and supporting foliage uh, and we've got a plant growing there it just illustrates that water is getting through the two plants actually uh, so anyway a simple solution is to fill this gap here uh, probably a cement based mortar is the best way of doing it there's quite a big gap underneath um, and you might as well do as much as you can for the cost but this is you can see it's been the gap is filled there so but in it the isn't triangular there. gap there all the way so to the top it's a relatively simple solution you can see the, the gap underneath and you've got to remember that it's collecting all the water that's pouring down including from higher up the roof so it's just pouring all the way down finding it's a gap and coming down here uh, the gutter apparently is not great um, I would say that is probably because it's a little bit low. It just needs somebody to... So what's happening, if you look at it at an angle, the water will pour off. And if it's really uh, a very powerful storm... Uh, I'll turn it over. 
it's a powerful storm. You can see that the water is going to flow over the top and some will miss this, go down here. But I don't think that's the source of your water. I think it will probably just innocently flow onto here and, and away. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about that. But since you're having somebody up here, just just move the uh, the, the screw. So not the source of internal dampness. Just slightly higher, just to reduce that effect. And that, in fact, just pushing this lead probably go a long way to solving your problem because obviously you've got water running down here. So. I've probably solved most of your problem actually, but anyway, just see how that goes. And then looking at this, this chimney press here, it is capped, this is called flaunching on top. Uh, You'll see in another and, survey, yeah. very similar problem it, where the, the lead- The crack just here is less of an issue because you've got water and it's that's fall, water falling problem. on top of it and a small amount might get through, but you you don't have, the aggregation effect of a long line of, of um, well, in this case, coping stones, where it's all the water falling all the way down that's coming down here. Whereas in this case, you know, it's only just falling down and primarily moving off to the side. So I don't think this is the cause of dampness. Um, Pointing is very rarely ever the cause of internal dampness. Something to know, but your pointing seems to be fine. It looks like it's been repointed fairly recently. Despite what some people say, but launching you, is very rarely the cause of dampness in properties. And then we're going to look over here. Your neighbour seems to be supporting plant life here, which suggests that water is flowing down and Likewise, and, pointing is very um, rarely the cause of dampness in properties. Getting into this area here. Um, so, there is a case for just putting some anti absorption cream in there. That should, should help. I would also get them to take the plants. I don't feel able I don't to do think that. this is causing your internal damp, but asking the Neighbours yeah. put some bitumen felt along here would help. Yeah, so we'll have a look at this. Look, it's like it's been relatively recently redone. Let's see what's happening. All right. A little bit of cement there would help, that but I doubt it's clear. the cause of your internal dampness because you don't have a brown stain particularly in that. I'll take there. some more film anyway. So this is looking at the coping stones from above and, and the lead and, and the, uh, the tiling. There is potentially a small gap in one of the tiles. Using a monopole, that is a, a long pole with a camera uh, a attached to it, so that I can look at well. the property from all sides. And it's dry in the middle. Back so indoors. It's damp, dry, damp, and that's not the coldest place. And here, the hygroscopic so those salts. Those are hygroscopic salts. And the contrast with the last property is where the hygroscopic salts were on the ground floor. This is the chimney breast. And this is still damp here. And these microscopic salts are typically around chimney breasts. Mold. So I'll have a, a better look at that. And this damp is here. 
So I think we're getting two, two issues Hydroscopic here. salts come uh, from and coal. This is condensation. It's not a source of dampness. Picking up some of the They're colour from in the timber. dynamic equilibrium. That, Evaporating, it, condensing constantly around 50% relative salts. humidity mark. Which a key ingredient in mortar and normal uh, plaster. The old name was high, um, Where you've got mould, you know you've got excess vapour. that is also caused by condensation. It'll be from, probably primarily from this, it's the main problem here. But the bathroom was going to be an issue as well. You can tell condensation. Oh, the bathroom doesn't have an extractor fan. Because you're not it's getting the brown staining. Vent, and obviously if the wind's blowing the other direction, um, presumably... The if it's penetrating damp, too. it would bring colour through the... So just under the, the windows wall, still, As we have elsewhere. Yeah, so that, that's going to be condensation. That, I mean, I, I will check the outside, but it looks fine. But a very common issue is particularly... You've got single gla glazing. You've got these... Um, uh, things for reducing draft, draft excluders, or uh, and then condensation forming the hair dribbling down, and it it's creates a brown stain because it's it's going through timber. Right. Okay. Uh, I will have a look on the outside, but it looks fine. If if you had an issue on the outside. I don't believe you have. You would get a g green or brown colouring, or at least signs of dampness, like plant growth and right. and so on. But th this looks fine. You don't have any damage there. If you have condensation in one place, you probably have condensation elsewhere. I see no telltale signs of oh, okay. penetrating damp on the outside. Yeah, I was thinking this also would be another. Well, so the secret to, so as I said to you right at the beginning, double glazing can cause more problems than it solves because mm. it actually takes moisture out of the air, mm. but then it causes this, this issue here. You can see the drip mm. drip onto there. Uh, but if you keep your internal vapour levels, i.e. the dew point, lower than the outside temperature, then you won't have this problem going forward. That is single yeah. glazing takes to make sure moisture out of the air. Use through condensation. Good ventilation, and I'll have a, a better look at that. But I can see the bathroom vents not where well, you don't have a mechanical no, vent, and you do need it that, for modern day living. Yeah, I was going to say that will uh, be put in when the bath, you know, with this reefer, okay. an extractor fan. And then I'll, I'll have a look at the kitchen extractor, but There's have you no got extractor there. Uh, no extractor in the kitchen. <laughs> and it's and, you, and it's open because you can take the door off, yes. so you've got. And the uh, here we go, now it's an extractor. We've got historic penetrating damp from mm -hmm. the roof. There could be an ongoing risk of condensation forming on the sarking material, mm -hmm. which is bitumen and is not allowing airflow and there's no ventilation. So I would put in two V-shaped cuts mm -hmm. and with flaps down at the top of the roof on either side so to create some airflow mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. uh, this but it's dry at the moment mm -hmm. this is damp and this this is caused by the coping stones with a gap at the bottom mm -hmm. one allowing water to run all the way down and then through that and that is currently damp mm -hmm. uh, this is these are hygroscopic salts um, I explained more detail in the previous video, but calcium nitrate is the most common one. It comes from the historic burning of coal. Uh, it causes deliquescence, which is a form of condensation at normal levels of relative humidity, around 50%. So I'm going to get you to put a data logger on there. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll see that the, the relative humidity will hover between about 50 and 60% normally. Um, this, by contrast, these that these um, that's condensation and mould that you've got in the corner there, oh, okay. and next to that, and then over there, and those I think are more or less definitely coming from well a combination of a heated drying rail, mm -hmm. uh, not having 
extractor fan in the bathroom mm -hmm. and probably keeping the door open mm -hmm. uh, and and kitchen mm -hmm. extractor also just natural just living respiration mm -hmm. and so on so you need ventilation mm -hmm. and dehumidification i'd recommend as well particularly yeah. if you're going to double glazing yeah okay and i'll put some recommendations in, in the um, the written report mm -hmm. okay so in summary the there are three issues there's penetrating damp you can tell that because of the brown staining there is condensation around the cold spots and there are hygroscopic salts.